Today we have Olaf with us, and Olaf actually was just awarded Microsoft MVP. So congrats for that, Olaf. I'm glad uh, th th this you, might Robert. be the first video. Uh, oh, where, totally. Like, where right. This is, is the first public appearance. Totally. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, you got the scoop here. <laughs> that is right. That's awesome. Well, um, we've been working with Olaf a bit with Scythe, and uh, he's been using it with his company, Falcon Force to do yeah. some adversary emulations. And if you don't know Olaf, he knows a thing or two about Sysmon and how to detect a lot of malicious activity, right Olaf? Sure, uh, Sysmon is a, a, a freely available tool which is uh, provided by Sysinternals. That is a company that is, has been acquired by Microsoft years ago, I think, and it's still, it's still licensing software and my, mostly maintained by Marcus Zinovich who I deeply admire for all the stuff he does. It's crazy. Um, so this one is a, is a device, or it's a kernel driver that has a service connected to it, which you can configure that is able to get a lot of high fidelity telemetry from your system. Um, and, yeah, and, and the kind of fidelity or the kind of uh, events are like process creation events, registry access, driver loads, uh, file writes, uh, they recently added uh, Falsfin hash events where you can also see the mark of the web, for instance. So if you download something with a browser, uh, the alternate data stream actually records where that came from and which was the referral link. Um, DNS requests, WMI, um, name pipes, you name it. It's, it's, it's a super nice source for, uh, for data as a, for me as a defender at least. And so it runs on endpoints. So you have to deploy this on, on all your endpoints and then it logs somewhere and you send those logs. How does that work? Yeah, well, I, I prefer to deploy it on, on servers and endpoints uh, uh, for that matter. Um, yeah, and then you have to use the native Windows uh, uh, tools to use this, right? So either a group policy or SCCM, or if you have a package management system that you have that you can use to deploy, uh, some people do it through Splunk. If you use Splunk, you can have a universal forwarder. It has to be run a system though, so that is also a risk uh, that you need to be willing to take. Uh, but generally, most IT companies or IT groups uh, provide it through a GPO or SCCM, which is super easy. It's just a single binary and a config file that you need. Um, and then it installs um, and, and it logs to the event log which you can subscribe to. You can do Windows event forwarding. You can use uh, the Splunk binary, as I mentioned before. Um, Microsoft has its own one for Azure Sentinel. Um, and there's WinLog Beats, which is also able to, uh, to, de to deal with it. So there's multiple ways of getting it out there. Nice. And how do you have it set up to test this? I'm um, assuming you test the, these thing, these events and what is enabled and whatnot in a lab environment before deploying it out to your customers and so production totally, systems. Yeah. yeah, and generally I, I, I prefer to have a lab per client even since their environments differ a little bit and, and it has to be, usually I try to tailor it as much as possible. Um, and I, I have my own lab in Azure, which has a, yeah, it's like a small company, it's called Hawkins Lab, uh, just because I like stranger things. Um, and I have a DC, a couple of workstations, a VPN server, and, and, and a Splunk server, which yeah, I, I kind of like Splunk for, for quickly going through data. And I have an app that, that's connected to Sysmon data. So um, I'm not a Splunk salesman. I'm, I'm just a, 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 an avid user. But next to that, I, I'm also logging it to Sentinel just to have a comparison on how the tools work, how I can operate it. And um, yeah, it, yep. it's just a different different. Yeah, no, on Splunk, we, we see that with a lot of customers as well. So one of the things that we can do with Scythe is to configure it to send its logs to Splunk as well so that you can do the correlation uh, on those systems. But um, you also have syslog integration. So really, anywhere you can send logs, it's, it's a great idea to do that. Um, do you have something that you can show us here? Yeah, sure. So there it is. So this is just a simple um, uh, domain controller server, but it's just a generic Windows server for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, and what I did is I generated a, a, a ransomware uh, campaign within Skype that executes uh, a few commands. It creates some files, it um, 
connects, of course, to the Sky server. Uh, and then it starts encrypting it and downloads a file from Pastebin just to notify people uh, uh, that the, 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 the data has been encrypted. Um, and I, I always like to make jokes, so I call it pretend somewhere. And basically, it's just an executable that you can execute. Um, it runs for a bit. Um, and then um, basically what I what I wanted to show is a little bit of the of the Sysmon integration. So I prepared a couple of um, of custom views, but of course it's just available under the applications and services logs. The only thing I did is I dissected it and I filled it a little bit just for for speed. Um, and when when you click on this one and refresh. Uh, you see all the process creation events. So this is one of the events that is probably one of the most valuable ones within Sysmon, if, if I can yeah, say. Um, and basically what you see here is that uh, uh, there, there is a technique ID, it's called user execution because I actually double clicked it. Uh, this is generated uh, by one of my Sysmon rules. So this is something that you can tailor the rule name. It's, it's just a customiz customizable field. Um, but it can be very useful if you quickly want to go through the logs and find for certain, find a certain technique. But it can, of course, be uh, uh, misappropriated or mistagged. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. But basically, you see here that that I, as the user, uh, uh, executed the, 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 the command. Uh, you could see the integrity level, uh, my logon ID. There's, there's a whole lot of information here. There's even a hash for, uh, joined to that. Uh, that is generated uh, when, when the executable is run. So you can also see virus total, something like it, maybe it's in there, right? It doesn't have to be, in this case, probably isn't because it was just generated by uh, Skype. Um, and then you can also see the parent, which is uh, sometimes very useful. If it came from Word, for instance, then you might give it some extra attention. Um, so this is this is super super useful. And then one of the cool things about Sysmon is that you can also see uh, a parent process global unique ID and also the process global unique ID. And this enables you to to correlate different events um, uh, across the board. So you can basically make a whole story about it. Um, then there's a couple of other events. So this is uh, uh, the the um, sorry I'm now blanking a little bit. So this is the process access. Uh, where, where certain memory addresses might be uh, called and, the, and you can actually also see the call trace. So in this case, you see that, that uh, the pretensomware uh, actually injected something or at least uh, access the memory of command.exe with full uh, read, write and execute permissions, did something. So what you then could do based on this information is actually look at these DLLs in, in your favorite disassembler to at least look at the functions that were called. And you have to do this on that system or at least on the same DLL version of that system. So it's not very accessible, it, it, but it can be if you really want to dig into what is going on, you can actually have a look at, at, at be, a peek behind the curtain, so to say. Uh, I think uh, the, the, the binary is already done because we can see here that, that there's, there are all the stolen files. Um, so there is some encrypted files. There is an ex a text file next to this, which you can actually have a look at because that should have been recorded as well. So event ID 11 uh, shows you all the files that have been created. So in this case, we already see immediately that there was a the, the, the text file that has been created by the same executable. Uh, and we see also that there was a bunch of encrypted important files. Um, so one of the things that you could do in, in a scenario like this is have a trigger on one executable, uh, writing a lot of files within a very short time frame to one location, maybe even with specifics in, uh, in, in the file name. And uh, where, where would you do that? Because I think you're hitting on a great point, right? Like you open up files all the time. If you have a number of users in an organization or they're creating files, it's really putting these attacks together and then seeing when all these events happen at the same time. Sysmon is logging them, but where would that security analytics, if you will, occur so that an alert oh, gets right. triggered? So in the case of Sysmon, it's, 
pretty difficult to do this on the endpoint itself because then you need to push rules there and, and have a, a, a sort of analytic engine. So this is generally done in, in a Sentinel or Splunk or ArcSight, Curator. So a SIM or a log analytics platform, so, so to say. Um, and, and, and this is where the, the biggest distinction between an EDR and Syswan is, for instance. Uh, an EDR has, has the capability to do a lot of stuff on the endpoint itself, do the analytics, maybe even block it, whereas Syswan is actually only the telemetry generator. So you need to do something with that data, ship it off to a central location uh, and correlate it maybe across events. So this only alerting maybe on this event might also be challenging because you might get a lot of false positives if people copy and paste a lot of stuff around. So you might want to uh, uh, tie it together with a couple of other events. Uh, whereas um, that same executable has been connecting outward to this IP address a lot. Uh, so that's some beaconing behavior that you might see. Uh, not every ransomware does that though. Uh, and it actually connected also to a different IP. Um, and in this case, we can have a look at the DNS events uh, where we see that uh, the, the pretensor were actually connected to Pacebin to download that text file. Um, and it also connected to uh, some, some uh, oh, this is Firefox, and then also to another uh, shady domain name that actually might give you some other extra indicators uh, to have a look at. Um, and then there were also some drivers that were loaded. And this will actually, this will probably help a little bit in, um, in, in dissecting a little bit. So, so this is WMI, but let's have a look. So pretensionware loaded critnet.dll, um, which is useful for a lot of things, but at least cryptography uh, is, is in there. Uh, the encrypt sslp.dll, some API stuff, some Wintrust stuff, DP API, uh, another encrypt.dll. Uh, so there, there's a couple of crypt DLLs at least in there. There's a URL mod to download stuff. Um, so uh, if you have a, s a small look at only the encrypt DLL, for instance, you, you would immediately see that there's a lot of functions in there that, that has to do with crypting data or decrypting data. Um, so what you could do uh, as well to correlate those file create events uh, a little bit together and, and get a higher fidelity alert is have a look at, okay, how many binaries in my environment actually use a subset of those DLLs together, uh, uh, especially the crypt ones, uh, and generate a lot of files. And that, that is probably a very low amount of binaries. It actually does that. Um, and then the, you, you, if you join those together in an alert, you actually get a, lo a lot less alerts probably. Uh, and so the false positive rate will also drop significantly. That's fantastic. Wow, this was like the quickest primer on Syspawn ever that actually goes through a number of different events. And I really appreciate your time, Olaf. If someone um, sees this and wants to get started with Syspawn, what, do you have any recommended reading or what, what do you suggest they do to start playing with this and maybe consider implementing well, this in their environment? Probably the easiest is to, to build a lab. Uh, download either my configuration, Swift on security has a really good one. There's a couple of really good base configurations that you could start with. Um, but the biggest recommendation is really to, to tune it to your environment. And maybe you even want to start with enabling everything, just see how much is there and only disable the stuff you really don't want to see or really trust. So there's a couple of ways of, of going there. Probably getting a, a, a pre-generated config would be the easiest way to start because you get a lot of fidelity from the logs instead of a sort of fire hose. And from there on out, you could always uh, do some risk-based choices into adding some, some more telemetry or getting rid of it. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Olaf. This has been great. Uh, congratulations again with uh, yeah, that Microsoft you. MVP Thanks award.